Hello guys, how are you? The Code Holic is here. I continue series on YouTube framework and in this video I want to talk about controller lifecycle, controller events and how we can use these events uh, in real world applications. So let's have a look at the controller lifecycle first. When the request is made first the uh, and the controller is resolved, first the controller uh, is controller instance is created and its int method is called. After this, uh, then the action should be created. And during this process, first, if the action uh, ID is not provided in the root, then it, it takes the uh, default action and creates an action object uh, from this default action ID. If the action ID is provided, then this action is searched in the actions map, in the actions method. Uh, if the action doesn't exist in the actions method, then the application searches in the inline actions, among the inline actions, and if the action wasn't found there also, then the invalid root exception is thrown. If the action was found and the action object is created, then the uh, controller uh, sequentially calls before action um, on application, then it calls before action on module, and then it calls before action on the controller. So if controller is a child class of another controller, first it will call this before action method on the parent controller. Okay, and if any of these uh, actions before action methods uh, basically re return false, the sequential calls won't be uh, done anymore. So if application before action returns false, module before action and the controller before action won't be thrown. So if uh, controller is um, is not if controller doesn't belong to application, and if it belongs to the con some other module, in this case the modules before action will be thrown. Otherwise, simply there is no module. The application is module uh, by itself. Okay. Uh, when after this before action, then the action is run and then the controllers after action is run and then the if the module exists modules after action is run and finally applications after action is run so before action and after action methods uh, basically trigger before action and after action events so if you want to listen to these events and do some actions you can do this and we're going to see also this Okay, here's my ID and the status is where we left on previous video. We created controllers, uh, we created, we learned um, how to convert a uh, controller ID into controller name or vice versa. And I also showed you controllers in subfolders and let's talk about the events. So I'm going to delete these controllers and I'm going to focus on the site controller. Okay, so uh, in the web I... I, I removed also this default route and in the browser this is this is the uh, welcome page okay so let's um, go to the controller and listen on before not listen but override before action method okay so here I can dump something like controller before action okay and let's see what happens in the browser so the controller before action is is used before the before action is called on the controller the uh, application calls application before action okay so let's go to the web php and now attach an event listener uh, on the application uh, which listens on before action okay on before action So I can dump something here, application before action. Let's go to the browser and see it. So first application before action is written and then the controller before action. So if I want to um, attach um, an event on the controller, let me remove this or comment it. If I want to attach an event on the controller, I can write it here. I can access my controller e up controller and then I can use on method to add an event listener and I need to point here the uh, the event name so there exists constants for this controller event before action 
and if event of direction so you can choose whichever you want and here I will print dump controller before action from um, on method okay so let's do like this let's refresh the page and here I see application before action controller before action from on method and let's go to the controller and uncomment this code also and see their ordering so here it is application before action then controller before action and then controller before action from on me method that's because this application before action basically calls at some point uh, triggers the event so we can follow this by controller and mouse and here we see uh, it calls the parent before action once again let's follow this parent before action and here it is it triggers uh, event before action okay so on before action in the controller you get an action object my advice is you always dump the whole object and explore it to see what the object contains and let's see it so here is the eBase inline action so it, it also points you that the action is an inline action okay so here we have the action ID we have the controller and many other properties and uh, the interesting thing is ID here so from before action from here we can decide we can we can see which uh, action ID is there like if action ID is index I can do some other thing but for other actions um, the normal behavior should happen okay so for example um, the controller supports layout public layout which by default is main so main layout is used to render the views so if I want to change this for index page like for index page I need to make the, the layout admin of course we don't have admin layout and it will throw an error we need to have admin in the layouts folder right here and it will throw an error right now but I just want to demonstrate this so here on before action uh, let's comment this so th this is the default so let's leave it okay the layout is default main and if the action ID is index I want to change the layout into admin okay for other actions leave it main for index change to admin let's go to the page and see here the error view not found and searches for this admin okay so if I change the current route into site slash login for example it uses this main layout and it doesn't throw this error so this before action is really good place um, to do some uh, to do some actions before the action is run and here you can decide whether you want to change the layout or whether you want to disable the um, CSRF uh, validation for this particular action the CSRF validation um, is strictly connected to the um, data submission so we will know more about this when we talk about forms and data submission but if you're already familiar with uh, this particular property enable CSR validation um, you should uh, you, you can disable it for one particular action right here uh, is it a good way to disable this uh, CSR validation uh, it's not actually a um, safe solution so this this was invented to um, be more secure I don't really recommend to disable the CSR validation okay let's talk about um, after action so inside after action I can I, I get the action the current action and I also get the result okay let's dump both of them and see what they are here is the action inline action and then the result and the objects are too large and it just cannot dump let me remove the action the action is the largest object because it contains also controller and the controller has a reference to the application and that's why it's a huge object let's let's see only result okay and here is result the result basically is the whole HTML which is sent to the user and here is my result so this is the result the whole web page okay after action is a perfect perfect place to uh, inject some code into your HTML if you want to do so okay 
Okay, that's it guys, see you in the next video, uh, thumbs up, uh, subscribe, share and see you in the next time.